Well hey, welcome to another ICH2 video. Um, sorry, not the camera there. <laughs> We're looking at the Model Railway Village again uh, this time. Um, just because, well, I've got so many to get through <laughs> all that. Um, what I did last time was I put all of my issues into this binder. Um, I did it off camera, which is why you didn't actually see me do it. But I have done that, that's what I've done. It's really quite nice actually. It's a very high quality binder. And even though the dividers could be better designed, it all goes in really nicely and it looks pretty cool and yeah, it's dead nice, it's dead good. So I'm pretty sure that that will fill up in time. So here we have the Your Model Railway Village Collector Series Part 3. Or at least I think it's Part 3. I can't actually see the number but I'm sure it's number 3. There's one way to find out. Yes, it's number three. <laughs> Phew, rest. Okay, so what do we get in this? We get another one of these little booklet things, which, as I say, is split up into sections, um, just like that. And then those sections go in the corresponding divider sections in the binder. We get another piece of the trap mat. Um, they've got to stop with that soon, surely. But again, really, really big. And in fact, now we're and now I think we've got well, we've definitely got three pieces now. So is there four? Let me just have a quick butchers. Yeah, you can see that there's another one there in part four. Um, but I don't think. Oops. Apologies again. I don't think. No, there isn't one for part five. So. There's just four huge mats then. So as soon as I open number four, I'll lay them all out in the on the conservatory floor if possible. And we'll have a look at just what this village is going to be like. Because I'm going to have to order some baseboard, aren't I? And start building it. Um, okay. So yeah, we've got another another piece of the trap mat. I think we can just call it that, can't we? Well, we probably don't like us calling it that, but tough. So here we go, number three, your model... Your model... <laughs> Right, <laughs> we're back. I've had a drink and there should be no slurring this time. I should be able to get my words out, okay. So, what have we got? Uh, steam trains to Scarborough. Hmm, okay, that's quite nice. Build your railway station. Um, yes, in fact, what, what do we get in this one? Obviously a piece of track and more stuff for the little station, maybe? The, t the, the two different roofs? Um, okay, let's have a look. So... Contents. Station parts and straight track. Assemble the ticket office and station master's house and customise the slate roof. And then tips and hints on how to give your layout that all important realistic look. Didn't we do that with number two? I'm sure we did. Uh, the rise of Yorkshire's seaside jewel, Scarborough. Yeah, I've been. I went this year actually. It was quite nice. Not too bad. Definitely not too bad. Nicer than Blackpool anyway. God's wonderful railway. Oh, I really don't like him calling it that. <laughs> um, I just I just genuinely prefer Great Western Railway, personally. But yes, um, it is certainly wonderful, and I agree with that. The story of the railway isn't barred, Kingdom Brunel built, and why its gauge was not adopted as a national standard. Yeah, it's a shame. So that would be interesting. Uh, right, okay, so here we go then. Station parts and straight track. Uh, the second set of station parts completes all you need to build your station. You will find detailed instructions on these pages. Hmm. Right. So, okay, we're going to have to do like a little special video for this then, aren't we? So if this is part three, we're going to have to do like a part 3A or part 3.1 or something like that, um, where you'll get to see me build it. in. In, when I did the uh, video on part two, I asked everybody, would you like to see me um, build it? Would you like to see me put it all together and weather it and paint it and all of that stuff? And you overwhelmingly said yes. Um, I didn't get a chance to reply to you any of, any of you personally, because just as I was about to, you two came along and screwed up the whole comments system. So apologies for that, but I did certainly read most of them. And yes, you basically want to see me build it all and put it all together. Of course you would. Why not? So I'll have to do like a little part 3A or part 3.1 or whatever I call it. I don't know. And you'll get to see me put the little um, station uh, together. 
Uh, what does it say? Building a station. Station pass with two roof sections, two floor panels, windows and doors, two sets of steps. Hmm. Uh, straight track. Continue to collect the lengths of track for your circuit with a straight section. So I guess they're going to be giving the track away for quite a bit. Well, I say giving it away, you're paying for it, but you know what I mean. Ah, so this is quite good. Step-by-step -step instructions then on how to put it all together. Mm hmm looks fine. Using adhesive, it says, not essential to glue the parts of your station together as they are designed to click together. However, if you want to make doubly sure that you have a thoroughly rigid building, it is a good idea to use an adhesive. Use poly cement adhesive. This gets good adhesion, but does not set too fast, giving you the chance to make adjustments. Okay, that's all fine. I'll take you all. Through, I'll take you through that then when I do the uh, special video on putting all of that together. And just look how. I mean, it is quite pretty, but look how unrealistic though that brickwork looks. Um, so I shall show you how you can make it look better for as cheap as possible. Um, for, we'll do it really cost effectively. Um, I'll try my best anyway. So, yeah, and don't worry, I'll keep a record of everything I spend as well. Uh, just so that by the end of it we can see what the true cost of the layout was. Uh, customizing little slate roofs. The plain grey roofs do not have a very natural look. Oh, God. Right, yeah, so the roofs are rubbish as well. Hmm. Um, construction notes all about model railways. During the course of this collection, we will give you detailed instructions on how to give your layout a realistic look. Here are some of the set techniques that will be used to create that final effect. So, um, something to do with the tunnel. Um, leaving one side open so that you can deal with derailments. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Uh, although, again, <laughs> yeah, I say it makes sense, but if you left this corner over here of the tunnel, um, open so that you could get in there with your hands and stuff. That's only really actually very good if you can walk quite right the way around and get to it. Um, the tunnel on my proper layout upstairs is right up against the wall of the room, so you can't do that, not unless you've got um, some sort of Star Trek type phase cloak technology or something, which I don't think we have. The layout contains all the elements of a country village served by road and rail. The variety of greenery Hard surfaces and masonry styles create a realistic effect. Yeah, yeah, it's a realistic effect, all right. But it doesn't start out realistic, does it? You've got to do quite a bit of work. I mean, look at the little village there. Hmm. Okay, so moving on. Oh, that's my phone. Uh, note how this area looks slightly scruffy to reflect the, the coal yard. Okay, I must admit, it is quite good of them to admit, you know, to hold their hands up and say, look, the village isn't going to be realistic if you do nothing to it. You've got to do this, we recommend you do that, it'd be great if you do this. But all of that stuff is extra time and extra money by the looks of it. So we'll just have to see how it goes, won't we? And as I say, we'll tot it all up and keep, a, 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 keep our eye on the costs. Um, but I'll also be keeping my eye on the instructions to see how user-friendly they are. And I, I do have some pretty good skills when it comes to all this sort of stuff, but I'm going to be pretending that I've never done it before. And we'll see just how well I get on. Um, Steam comes to Scarborough. Okay, so here's the little article on Scarborough. That's quite nice. Um, I should read all about that. I have been. I have seen that building in real life lots and lots of times. It is quite a nice little seaside town. It's not too bad, especially when the weather's gorgeous. It's it's quite nice. Um, but getting there by train, wow. Yes, so I shall, I shall enjoy reading that then. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this because I keep getting it wrong every time. And people keep typing in the comments exactly how you're supposed to pronounce it. But of course, that's no good unless I actually hear somebody right in front of me say, this is how you're supposed to pronounce it. So I'm not even going to try, but there you go. That's what this section's called. So read that out to yourself, as <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, and so it's just basically on the... I love this kind of artwork. I don't know what it's called, but it's just so... Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? All the old posters. I really do wish that rail companies today would go back to sort of this sort of thing, to be honest. It's so much more eye-catching. And it's so much more decorative than the rubbish they put up these days. It's just corporate nonsense and it really has no soul to it at all. So it would, it would be gorgeous to get back to beautiful, beautiful artwork like this. That's just adorable. 
Absolutely beautiful. Um, so that's, yeah, is that all part of it? Is that all one article? Yeah, I think it is. Um, the story of Britain's railways. Right, so here we have, yes, I know, God's wonderful way. It's, but it is actually called the Great Western Railway, you know, people. Just in case anyone watching this for the first time from Zambia or something really thinks that that's what it's called. Um, I don't think it'd go do down too well with all religious denominations in the world, and especially the non-religious ones, but it is the Great Western Railway, and it is wonderful, I must admit. It is fantastic. So I shall definitely, definitely enjoy reading about that because I thought that his broad gauge was significantly better. I mean, having such a broad gauge allowed the boiler, as you can see there. Oops. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's supposed to do that. But um, it does kind of ruin our picture a bit, doesn't it? There we go. So, yes, basically what this did was it allowed, uh, the, as you can see, the boiler to be sunk. It allowed the boiler to sit lower inside the locomotive and it um, provided greater stability and stuff, so that was really cool. And why it, um, well, because it was uh, lower and the locomotives had greater stability, you could ramp up their speed and stuff and get to higher speeds, so that was again really, really good. Why it just wasn't adopted, I don't know. So we'll find out all about that. So. I'm going to go grab a drink, and then we'll open this and have a look at these parts. Okay, I'm back. Um, <laughs> apologies for the um, little jump cuts here and there. Um, if it's not somebody outside making a noise and interrupting me, it's my voice running out basically because my mouth is dry and stuff. So here we are with the parts that come in issue three. And so if I just pull the back of this, Aren't these things just so annoying to open? I can never open them in just one go like that. They always fall apart. Here we go. That's not like it. That's not like it. Well, even now it's just falling into billions of bits. Wow, I do hate this. It's so messy. So messy. Right. Okay, so we've got another piece of track. And we know it's, in, it's a really odd length. It's a length that Pico and Hornby don't do. Very, very strange. But it does come fitted with um, fish plates, as you can see. And loads and loads of people have been asking, what does it say underneath? What does it say on the sleepers? Well, it says, made in China, and that is it. And it's struggling to focus on that because the camera recorder is obsessed with everything in the background. But look, you can see there, made in China. And it, it says nothing else. There is literally nothing else anywhere. It doesn't say Backman this or Hornby that or anything. Um, so I don't know what factory it's come from. Um, most track is made in China. <laughs> most things are made in China because it's the cheapest place to make a lot of stuff. But well, we'll just have to see how good it is, won't we? Once we've once we've started to put it down and run trains on it and stuff, we'll just have to see how good it is. Um, now, again, there's been loads of people in the comments saying you do get a locomotive, but you don't. What you're going to do is you'll be given an offer for a locomotive. So I think they're going to send you some stuff through the post to say, look, we've got a locomotive here. It's a bargain at $34.99. Do you want it? Or they might even be really cheeky and say, we're going to send you this and debit you the $34.99. If you say no, we won't. If you say nothing, we will. That could happen. Um, I've heard that that's happened with some of the Doctor Who ones. So I'll keep my eyes peeled, don't worry. I, I, I'll keep a, a careful eye out for everything that they send through. Right, so here we have, well, I don't know, is, is that the, they, do they form the base? Ah, there we go. Yes, I think that's going to form the um, the foundations of the, of the building. I would, I would imagine it does. Um, and then we've got loads of windows. Look at all this. It's really quite a thick plastic. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I don't know. I it, mean, it, it's, it's quite strong, but at the same time, you don't get too thick in case it's a little bit unrealistic. But, okay, so there, there, those are our windows. Oh, and some more. And I guess these are doors, maybe? Are they doors? Yeah, they look like doors. But again, I don't know. 
Oh, and if you, we've even got a little round window. How cute is that? Okay, and then these are the little steps. <laughs> they look okay, they look like steps. And then we've got all the roof pieces. So there we go. Oh, I say all of them, there's only two, isn't there? Yeah. And they're going to go, how are they gonna go? Oh, I know, yes. There we go, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be something like that. So one roof is slightly higher than the other. Yeah. And then I guess the little chimney pots and things that we opened in part two are going to go in those little caps at the top. Well, yes, it does look very unrealistic. There's no way you would have a... Have a <laughs> there's no way any building in the world looks this pristine and that immaculate. But the strength is there. They're very nice and sturdy. They're well built. They're well, mil they're well molded. So that's quite good. Um, you are just going to have to see how well I put it all together following their instructions to it all. Um, and as, well, yeah, these, I was just wondering about that actually. These instructions are clearly for both parts. So I mustn't have had any instructions in part two. Um, part two must just go straight, uh, sorry, part four is just going to go straight into something else. So I'll put all this away, put all the buildings to one side and have a look at part four.